March 3rd, we celebrate the feast of St. Catherine Drexel, the second American-born saint to be canonized. Mother Catherine is known for her commitment to racial justice and her educational efforts for minority groups in America. She was born Catherine Marie, second daughter of Francis and Hannah Drexel of Philadelphia, on November 26, 1858. Her mother died about a month after her birth. Her father was a well-known banker and philanthropist. Two years later, Catherine's father married Emma Bouvier, who raised Catherine and her sister as her own. They taught them from an early age to use their wealth to the benefit of others. Drexel's family was one of the wealthiest in America, and Catherine was related to some of the most prominent figures in American financial and political history. Devout Catholics, they gave a great deal of their time and money to philanthropic activities. Catherine grew up seeing her father pray for 30 minutes each evening. And every week, her stepmother opened their doors to house and care for the poor. Catherine and her two sisters were educated privately and were encouraged to conduct a Sunday school for children of the employees of their family's summer home. After watching her stepmother suffer from terminal cancer for three straight years, Catherine also learned that no amount of money could shelter them from pain or suffering. From this moment, Catherine's life took a turn. She became filled with a passionate love for God and neighbor, and she took an avid interest in the material and spiritual well-being of Black and Native Americans. During her family's travels across the Western United States, Catherine was struck by the poor living conditions endured by Native Americans on reservations. She felt strongly that something needed to be done. At 14, she considered entering the religious life, but was discouraged by her parents and by her spiritual advisor, Bishop James O'Connor. He believed that the wealthy young woman would not adjust to the privations of the convent. But she felt a calling nonetheless. Catherine's life was jarred by the death of her stepmother, to whom she was devoted. Two years later, her father too passed away. At the time of his death, her father left the largest fortune recorded in Philadelphia at that time. His three daughters received bequests that provided them with an extremely generous income for life. Picking up the thread of her earlier trip to the West, Catherine began to devote a significant amount of her personal fortune to missionary and charity work among American Indians. On a trip to Europe, she had the chance to meet Pope Leo XIII. She asked him to send missionaries to help American Indians in Wyoming. He replied, why don't you become a missionary? This response shocked her and helped her open up new possibilities as to how to spend her life. After consulting with her spiritual director and to the disbelief of Philadelphia society, she decided to become a Catholic nun. On February 12, 1891, Catherine made her first religious vows. 
she devoted her inheritance and talents to missionary and charitable work among Native Americans and African Americans. Her decision made big news in the elite social circles of Philadelphia. Newspapers wondered how she could walk away from married life and an inheritance worth more than 100 million of today's dollars to serve poor people. Catherine founded a religious order of nuns, the Sisters of the Blessed Sacrament, for Indians and colored people that combined prayer and social action. To Catherine, education was the key to opportunity. In 1894, the first mission boarding school was set up. This was named St. Catherine's Indian School in Santa Fe, New Mexico. In 1915, Catherine opened Xavier University in New Orleans, the first Roman Catholic university in the nation that accepted black students. By 1942, they were running schools and mission centers for black children in 13 states, administering to Native Americans in 15 states. Catherine was decades ahead of the civil rights movement, which caught fire in the U.S. in the decade after her death. Later, the order began over a hundred missions and schools for American Indians and African Americans in the American South and West. Segregationists were not happy with her efforts and burned a school in Pennsylvania. In 1922, the Ku Klux Klan threatened a school the sisters had opened in Beaumont, Texas. A stick of dynamite was discovered at another mission site. But a few days later, a severe thunderstorm devastated the area and tore down the Klan's headquarters there. Yet, amidst all this activity, she maintained an intense life of prayer. Having taken a vow of poverty, Mother Catherine lived the rest of her life with extreme frugality, wearing a single pair of shoes for 10 years and using her pencils down to the erasers. She was a constant worker, personally reviewing each request for aid. In 1935, Mother Catherine suffered a heart attack, and in 1937, she relinquished the office of Superior General. But now came almost 20 years of quiet, intense prayer from a small room overlooking the sanctuary. She died at the age of 96 at Cornwell Heights, Pennsylvania, on March 3, 1955. By the time of her death, she had more than 500 sisters teaching in 63 schools throughout the country, and she established 50 missions for Native Americans in 16 different states. Catherine was remembered for her love of the Eucharist and a desire for unity of all peoples. She was courageous and took the initiative to address social inequality within minorities. She believed all should have access to a quality education, and her selfless service, including the donation of her inheritance, helped many reach that goal. Mother Catherine's dedication inspired her sisters and admirers to begin the cause of her sainthood less than 10 years after her death. In 1987, she was credited with the miraculous healing of a man's deaf ear. In 1999, her intervention was declared to have resulted in the cure of deafness in a 17-month-old child. She was canonized St. Catherine Drexel on October 1st, 2000. She is only the second American-born saint. Ever-loving God. You called St. Catherine Drexel to teach the message of the gospel and to bring the life of the Eucharist to the black and Native American peoples. By her prayers and example, 
enable us to work for justice among the poor and oppressed. Draw us all into the Eucharist community of your church, that we may be one with you. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.